Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we talk about high-value, high-fi home theater and headphone equipment. And today, subwoofer. It's big. It's on sale. Being discontinued. Sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about this Klipsch subwoofer. This thing's big. I know you can't really tell by looking at it right now. Look at it. See, it's bigger than my head. It's the SPL. 12 they're being discontinued they used to be i think 850 dollars or 900 dollars now they're 500 dollars. i don't think they're 500 dollars everywhere though i think some places are still selling them for more money so i'm just looking at a couple other retailers and they're still going for 850 however i can't remember who said this to me i will link it in the description they're going for five hundred dollars over there hold on i gotta figure i gotta find out listen up that's what it is listen up is selling these for five hundred dollars which is quite a bit cheaper than the 850 that other places are selling it let's talk about some specs now first we have to have a disclaimer number one listen up sent this to me because they see that i'm pretty good at talking about discontinued products and I love talking about discontinued products because it's a heck of a way to get a big deal. It's a big deal. You can get a great deal on products that are discontinued. Number two, I'm not very good at reviewing subwoofers. Like for me, if they go boom really loud and they don't sound all sloppy and the cabinet's not resonating and things like that and they go low, like what, what else do I want? I know there's some people that are like, well, it's gotta be clarity and clear and everything. And to me, like, to me, there's, of course, there's music down there. Usually, I just want it to kind of fill in the lower octave. When people get crazy about subwoofers and clarity and things like that, that's awesome, but that's outside of my skill set. Does a subwoofer stay together? Does it punch really hard? Does it go down super low? If those thing, if those boxes are all checked, right? I'm a, I'm a happy camper. Now, I usually don't like giant subwoofers and this probably isn't really considered a giant subwoofer by some subwoofer standards it's big though the good thing is it still fits where i want it to go all this being said i'm usually not the subwoofer guy like there's other channels out there that are much better at subwoofers than i am but i've used subwoofers for 20 years i've been using subwoofers for 20 years and i have but i'm still not a subwoofer expert anyway Let's talk about the specs. Before we talk about the specs, I want to read to you. I'm not going to tell you, I'm not telling you which website it is. Okay. But this is what it has to say about the subwoofer. It has enough oomph. Okay. Oomph to shake the walls while also providing controlled, accurate bass at lower listening levels. It's the kind of sub that makes dinosaur, and spaceship movies take on a whole new level of realism in your room. Dinosaur and spaceships. Realism. I don't know. I don't know if we should be using the word realism and dinosaurs in your room in the same sentence. Anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting. 12 inch front firing long throw Sarah metallic spun copper woofer. Obviously, it's the one that looks like almost all Klipsch woofers. 300 watt RMS amplifier. It's a class D amplifier. 600 watts peak power. Frequency response 24 up to 125. And I was just listening to Beck. Wow. It's the one that was off of a toothbrush commercial. Anyway, boom. It's good. It's good. It goes down really far. I'll show you some pretty pictures of it going in and out. And about, I had a uh, one of my kids' toys. It was just some fuzzy thing. And about sucked it into the to the port there, so it was uh, it was rocking and rolling. I'm not a big sub guy, but listening to Beck and then watching a little Star Wars on it, it may be um, I may be a convert. Now these it isn't too big that it can't fit in most places, so this is pushing it as far as size for me. How big is it? Well, I'm glad you asked. 14 and three quarters inch wide, okay. 17 and 11 sixteenths high and then 21 and a quarter inch deep. So I have my stuff next to a console 
and I can still get that to fit where I have my other sub. My other subwoofer is really small, but it's also not very deep. So I've got plenty of depth back there. So this thing will fit, really gets things going in my room. I like it. So there's other subwoofers out there that have higher power ratings or whatever, but this thing is impressive. For $500 too, pretty, pretty impressive. On the back, this is where I could see people starting to get kind of grumpy about this subwoofer because it does lack a few features that other subwoofers include, but oftentimes those subwoofers may be smaller or not pack quite as big of a punch. Top left, you basically have a power mode button. Either it's always on or it's in auto, which is signal sensing. Sometimes works, other times it doesn't. So a lot of times I just leave the subwoofer on all the time, so I don't have to worry about the signal sensing. And then next to that, you have a phase switch. This is where people might get a little bit grumpy. A lot of subs at this price have variable phase. Most of the times a phase switch is going to take care of the majority of phase issues. However, SVS has the app which has unlimited phase adjustment, not just zero or 180. But this is, I think this one hits a little bit harder than the SVS. Now, I own the SVS personally. It's a sealed one though, so it's not gonna like compete with this one as far as like just knock your head off your shoulders. Next to that, you have the low pass filter. So if you're using LFE, low frequency effect from your receiver, then you would just turn that all the way up. If you're coming off a two channel amp or something like that, then you would set the low pass filter on the subwoofer itself. I would suggest starting at 80, unless you have really small speakers. Small speakers, start at 120 or 100. Anyway, start at 80 and then start messing with the gain. Speaking of gain, right next to it, you have the gain. I would recommend starting at midnight, pointing straight up. Then you can tweak it from there. Underneath that, you have the line in. So as far as inputs on this thing, it's line in only. There's no speaker level inputs. There is another input available for their wireless connection kit, which, which is sold separately. And then you can buy that and put this thing in the corner or something like that and then not have wires all over the house, which is cool because subwoofers actually do very well with wireless signals because again, there's not a whole lot of information down there. I mean, there's a lot of information as far as like getting things moving and exciting. As far as like amount of data though, very easy to throw that across the room wirelessly and not have any degradation in the signal. So if you need to hide this behind a chair, I don't know if you're hiding this anywhere. If you need to put this behind a chair or a couch, you certainly can with the wireless kit. To be fair, you can go get something from Rockfish that's been around for 10 years that does the same thing and maybe be cheaper, but it's probably not going to look as nice on the back of your new Klipsch SPO 12. And then below that you have a switch for 110 or 220 and then an IEC power connector. So who is this subwoofer for? Who's, who's this big boy for? Um, I think it's for people probably more interested in home theater than hi-fi, but it's gonna play double duty. I'm pretty impressed and if you start to think about if okay if you're really into this home theater stuff and you have the room you start to think i can get two of these for a thousand dollars it's a pretty compelling argument i wasn't super excited about doing this video i mean it's a subwoofer again i am not the not the sub expert i use them all the time i've owned them for decades it goes boom and it stays together and it doesn't really fall apart. I'm good with it. I generally don't like big... The subwoofers that I own that I've kept here are small. Small. This one is the first one that I've had that I'm been like, okay, all right, okay, all right. I get the bigger subwoofer. This still is not considered by many to be a huge subwoofer. I get it though. I would not recommend this one at retail price. I have no issue recommending it at the $500 discontinued price. In most rooms, 
this is going to be just fine. And at $500, man, it really moves some air. 300 watts, I know some people will say, oh, that's not enough power. Trust me. 20-foot ceilings, huge living room, open concept living room. Things were rocking and rolling. It's very realistic. It was like dinosaurs were in my room. Very realistic. Because we all know what it's like to be around dinosaurs in your room. It provided the most realistic dinosaur experience I've had. Okay, so I'll link it in the description. 500 bucks, great product. If you don't need all the fancy stuff and you want a sub that's big, but it's not huge, still pretty big, I would take a look at this. $500, they're not going to be around forever. So once these sell through, they are gone. So if you need a sub or two, take a look at the SPL 12 from Klerpsch, available at Listen Up. Links in the description and the pinned comment. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash man. Every Sunday night, we have Patreon-only Zooms, Discord group, Facebook group, other stuff, giveaways. You can use the links in the description. This will be, it's supposed to be an affiliate link, although we haven't quite figured out the affiliate thing. Other links in the description will also be affiliate links, which means if you click and you buy, I get a commission, but it doesn't cost you any more, so it's a great way to support the channel. You can also use the thanks button at the bottom of the video. Give me, I don't know why I did this. You can uh, buy me a cup of coffee for a couple of bucks, but don't feel compelled to buy me anything. You can also sign up for Amazon Music or Tidal Music. Links in the description. Click, sign up. Even if you quit, I get a couple of bucks. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Get yourself a giant, well, not really giant. Get yourself a new Klipsch, discontinued subwoofer, and shake the walls. Have a realistic experience with spaceships and dinosaurs. Fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the cheap audio man.